Deep we saw in the top eight of Grand Prix Miami in the hands of Zen Said. I believe Zen was playing with Chain of the Rocks. No copies of that here. Yeah, a little different, but he's got a full set of Ash Cloud Phoenix in this deck as well. So, and going a little bit bigger, Elspeth, Zenigo's Ash Cloud. We'll see how it pairs up against Green Red, but we are underway. Typically, I like the devotion side of the Mana Acceleration matchups because when you're playing with the Mana Acceleration base that Matthew's playing, it comes at the expense of creature removal. And both of these decks uncontested, it, it really goes in the favor of the devotion deck because they have much more consistent top ends and much more powerful top ends. going to say exactly the same thing. If you're both just going to deploy threats, it's harder to do it better than the devotion deck. And Bernie on the play has a great start. It's Elvish Mystic into turn two, Voyaging Seder, and having to sneak a Nykthos into there while he did it. You could see turn three or probably turn four being very good for Robert. Yep. Currently missing red mana, but red mana only in the deck for Crater's Claws. Yeah, so then to be fair, that's it's in the deck for answers, but not for threats. He may just not need the red. No, no I saw Robert with Crater's Claws, plenty of people out. And in that tournament in Houston, we saw a lot of green-red devotion. There was a lot of the mirror match. And Crater's Claws was most, one of the most important cards because the board gets gummed up and then you just, you just the die. Dome. Someone just <laughs> dies. Absolutely. Sylvan Carry added is the play here for Matthew. And the double ramp here from Robert, really effective. It's going to produce a turn three Whisperwood Elemental on the play. That is some big game. And that open in Houston was really the first time I saw Whisperwood Elemental on display both in the hands of Robert Bernie and Tannen Grace, who's playing a very similar list, and boy, did it impress. And now, it, it's funny to think that Whisperwood Elemental was not immediately incorporated into a bunch of decks, because it took a couple weeks for it to really pick up in popularity, but now it's just a staple threat of the format. Well, for, for Robert, he, Matthew does have the Valor stance for it. That will keep Robert off some of his strongest draws here. Uncontested, he would have four green mana, Nykthos, Voyaging Seder. Next turn might just become ridiculous. So, Matthew, though, does have to spend his whole turn doing that and then plays a temple, will pass back. Bernie's still with a great start. Yep. Though he still needs to follow up on this. This is by no means a lock, and by the way that the pace of the game's going, if Robert runs out of powerful action or Matthew's able to fend it off, Matthew can get to something like Elspeth Sun's Champion, which isn't quite as good as Pelucranos with 37 mana, but it's more than good enough to win the game still. Yeah, we looked at how Elspeth sometimes has had trouble ending games in Standard recently. That's not going to be true in this matchup, but uncontested... And Elspeth on the Naya side will still be very powerful. And Robert, on the other hand, well, how about another Whisperwood Elemental? Yep. Even with removal spells at the ready, Matthew can't answer this card very cleanly. Robert still nets Manifest Tokens. Let's see what the next play is here. Matthew with land four. And to be fair, a good draw in his own right, but really just behind ever since turn one. Yeah, the problem in this matchup is Matthew has a lot of fair Magic the Gathering cards in his deck, like Lightning Strike and Goblin Rabble Master. Now, those cards have the chance to be good if Matthew can really stunt Robert's early development and gets on top of him with the Zone Man Acceleration. But once we get to this stage of the game where both players are kind of made their land drops and they're doing certain things, Matthew just has a lot of cards in his deck that are far less powerful than the ones that Robert has. Well, here's Elspeth for Matthew, and this is going to be one of the great cards in the matchup. We'll see if she can do enough damage Looks like he's going to go ahead and minus three, so just use it as a kill spell for that Whisperwood Elemental. That, that's really impressive. I mean, that shows a lot about Whisperwood Elemental's strength there is. In that spot, Matthew could have plussed Elspeth and said, all right, I can block for a little while. I can try to get a lot of uh, Elspeth. And Matthew's saying, forget that. Just get this Whisperwood Elemental off the table and yeah. live to fight another day. So here come the Manifest Creatures. And what this is scary, if Robert's not swinging his Mana Creatures, it means he has another Haymaker. So the creature's going to swing across. And, well, here's the Haymaker. How about another Whisperwood Elemental? Yeah, Robert got that one on the house a couple turns ago from an earlier Whisperwood Elemental. And now Matthew, who's gone through such gymnastics to get the first two Whisperwood Elementals off the table, now is to find an answer to the third one. This deck is hard-pressed. This is a draw that is hard-pressed for the Nia Midrange deck to really ever be able to answer. Yeah, they're just playing a different style. Now, Matthew has the ability to do this to Robert also. Matthew can go turn one Mana Acceleration, turn two Rabble Master, turn three Kill Your Stuff, and that's his version of this draw. But once we get to the spot where we're at turn five, turn six, and both players have a lot of mana, Robert's deck just far more powerful. Yeah, now we're into that part where you said Matthew's just playing fair Magic cards. You see Pelucranos, World Eater. That was Matthew's play for the turn. Impressive card, but not great in the face of Whisperwood. No more lands from Robert on three, but with the fact that he has Voyaging Seder and Nykthos, doesn't really need more lands with the exception of maybe a mountain. Yeah, and I believe he picked up a red-green temple this turn, too. So he will Nykthos. That is for four mana. 
Now un untaps Nick, though, so he can use that one to go up to six if he needs. And that'll, looks like that will happen. So up to six green mana. And we see Eidolon of Blossoms. Drawing card two green floating. Here's a temple. Well, you see Critical Claws Robert's head, and if Matthew doesn't do anything big next turn, that could be kill the him. kill. Yeah. That could just be the kill. Robert will scry to bottom. And now Robert can just sort of clog up the ground here. And if Matthew tries to continue to play defense, then the Critter's Claws gets him. And if Matthew tries to race well, Robert's got a far superior board. We see Storm Breath Dragon on Matthew's side. And this is the Naya deck, you know, great efficient creatures, but they, they don't go wide like the Devotion deck here does. No, and now I think if Crater's Claws isn't killed, the attack with the leftovers wins the game. Yeah, this should be a Crater's Claws. This Crater's Claws should be lethal. Yeah. Uh, Nick those taps for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it untaps, yeah, it's not even close. play taps, 12. So for, it's for X equals 11, and that's before Ferocious. Yeah, game one goes over to Robert Burney. Yep, and uh, a much faster build than Green White Devotion, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's some, if you're going to think about, talk about things that Mastery of the Unseen cannot do, that would be one of them right there. Yeah, Mastery of the Unseen versus Crater's Claws means that one deck kills a lot faster than the other deck. <laughs> Absolutely. The players are going to go to sideboard here. Uh, looking first, all right, at Matthew's deck, you know, it, it seems really hard for him to answer those kind of draws from Robert, but he's got maybe out of board ways to keep that in check. Well, he has three copies of End Hostilities, a Crater's Claw, a wild, two copies of Wild Slash, two copies of Outpost Siege, a Bow of Nylea, two copies of a Race, a Wingmate Rock, a Chandra Power Master, two copies of Glare of Heresy. He does have some good options here. I think the Wild Slashes are nice, as are the three copies of End Hostilities. Try to contain the mana creatures a little bit, have some ways to catch up in the event that Robert's board gets out of control. I think Wingmate Rock is good in the matchup, too, because Robert doesn't have a lot of good answers to Flyers. Yeah, we have seen a lot of players look to the skies as far as ways to beat Green Devotion. Does he have time to do anything like Outpost Siege, or is that just going to be too slow? Too slow. Too slow, too low impact. Uh, I would be surprised to see Outpost Siege come in. All right, looking at Robber's sideboard, a lot of ways, game one seems to be his game here. Maybe he can go bigger if he wants to try to fight through removal. Uh, there are some cards here. He has Nissa, three Nissa World Wakers. He has the remaining two Genesis Hydras in his sideboard. Other than that, he does have Satessan Tactics. That's usually good in green mirrors. The question is, how much of a green mirror will this be after the sideboard? Yeah, it's not like Voyaging Seder Elvish Mystic Mirror match. Matthew has some mana acceleration, but he also has a lot of just big stuff he's playing. I don't think Success and Tactics is great in the matchup. I really like Arbor Colossus a lot. Just a, a big thing. Hard for Matthew to kill and good at shoring up Robert's vulnerability to Flyers. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the two copies of Genesis Hydra and the Xenagos are fine here. I'll say that really is in the main deck where he finds his strength here. Just I feel like Arc as far as archetypes go, Robert's at an advantage. Definitely. I, I think that this matchup can be fine for Matthew if he's on the play with a good curve and removal, but it's asking a lot. And on the draw, it's going to be really hard for him to keep up. It's ramp versus mid-range, typically a great spot for a ramp deck. Yeah. Now, as we mentioned before, this is actually our last open before Dragons of Tarkir comes out. Uh, the first open with the Dragons of Tarkir will actually be our standard and, well, Legacy Open, which is our Invitational in two weeks, happens in Richmond. And as you know, with our Invitationals, the players will be competing for the Invitational Championship. These are the players of the top players on our leaderboard in the Players Club and winners of IQs around the country. And they compete for the right not only to hold up the trophy, but to get their likeness on a token. It's one of the special prizes given away at the Invitational. And this one, this is our most recent winner. He was the quarter four winner, the winter champion of our Invitational. That's Dylan Donegan taking it down in Seattle last December. Yeah, $10,000, a spot in the Players' Championship, and finally, your likeness on a token. Right now, we're giving out the Dylan Donegan token in a variety of ways for all of our participants in the 20K Open Series events, like what's going on right now in Dallas. Anyone who signs up for a 5K Premier IQ and all orders from StarCityGames.com in excess of $5. Yeah. This token is available for a limited time, so if you want to get your copy, either place an order on StarCityGames.com or attend one of our many large tournaments. And remember, each weekend we have a 20K regular Open, and then on Sunday we have a 5K Premier IQ in the remaining two formats. So whatever is your construct format of choice, we'll have one of available for you. And one matchup back to Fent versus Bernie. They're at five and one. This one's not straight for day two, but the winner of this will certainly be knocking on the door, whereas the loser will have some work to do. Fent is on the play, Bernie on the draw. And Robert with a quick mulligan there. 
with the ramp decks. Always is a danger when playing a devotion or ramp style strategy is mulliganing. It is not a deck that is particularly forgiving to mulligans. You are looking for a mixture of acceleration and big threats. And lands. And so lands. It's, it's three pieces. Yeah. I mean, we've seen people sideboard cards like Mind Rot against ramp strategies in standard pass. Absolutely. Because it's just, you know, they, they need all their tools to work with. Now, this matchup, Matthew's not really overloading on removal. So uh, when you have a deck that has a lot of removal or a lot of Thoughtseize style effects, that definitely compounds the consequence of mulliganing. But uh, Matthew is not going to probably put Robert in disruption overload. Yeah, there, there isn't too much. The Naya deck isn't, isn't really about disrupting as, as so much as our black-based mid-range decks. It's really just about the best and most efficient threats. Yeah, a couple Wild Slashes, a couple Valorous Dances. There, there's some, but that's not the point of Matthew's deck. Elvish Mystic turn one for Matthew. And for Bernie, he'll match it with a Mystic of his own. Both players with Accelerance. Important for Matthew that he doesn't tempo-wise, get too far behind this ramp deck. Yeah, he, he needs to stay a little bit out in front at all times because his deck's just not quite as powerful. And perhaps some colored mana issues here for Matthew. Yeah, we do see he's just all green mana right now and no play as he passes back. Certainly could be a sign of danger. For Robert, it's going to be Sylvan carry added and no second land. Remember, both players here are actually keeping seven card hands. Well, Robert went down to six, but... Uh, all right, you're yeah. right. I, I don't mind Robert keeping that six card hand. It's unlikely that Matthew kills his accelerant, and if he gets to Sylvan Carry added, well, now he's definitely good to go. Yeah, Mystic swings in. Robert has to decide if there's any card that actually punishes him for blocking. Yeah, it, it's so funny because it's a free point of damage, and Robert knows that it's, you know, I, I, it's so unlikely. I can't that, think of one that does it. I think it's Gather Courage, maybe, or something, All you right. know, but. All right. There is one. Robert right. just can't risk it. It's so. It's one of those attacks where you just want to. You want to physically assault your opponent for making it because it's free, <laughs> but it's so annoying that they've gone ahead and done it. And, I, and now I'll, we see the reason for the keep two Voyaging Satyrs for yeah. Bernie. I love those kind of attacks, the free ones on the house, because yeah, it's it costs yeah. Matthew nothing, and if he gets a point of damage, well, that's a point of damage. But <laughs> it's like, there's just there's no way. Uh, but there, I can't. But... I just can't. Ah, uh, can't risk it. I have to think. I have to think. Is there any? even unreasonable card you could play to blow me out here. There's some pump spells in green. Could be, you know, just... What, yeah, what I like, though, is that it's some awareness to, to show that when it's bluffing, it's not so much about what card... It's not so much about how good it is if, is it for you to bluff, it's how well can your opponent call it. Like, Ben's realizing exactly. that Robert just cannot call that. Right. And... Here we get Stormbreath Dragon swinging, and that's a turn four dragon on the play for Fence. It puts Bernie down to 14. Bernie actually, despite being on one land with that Nykthos and two Voraging Satyrs last turn, has access to a reasonable amount of mana. Yeah, I mean, the, right now the Nykthos generates, it's plus one as yeah, so devotions this is, this to four. Is, uh, and the Voraging Satyrs are this is also. seven mana in play. Yeah. yeah. Voraging Maybe Satyrs more. effectively generate two mana as a result of this. So four, five, six, uh, yeah, he's got a lot to work with. No, it's nine. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's He's nine, got nine. nine. Doesn't look like a, nine, but it's nine. It could be more even if, if he plays an intervening idol on a Blossoms between some of the Voyaging Seder triggers. It could be 11. It's, yeah. it's for two lands, he's doing fine. You can see Robert doing some, some counting right now. Because that's the complicated thing you just mentioned when Voyaging Seder's in the equation. You can sometimes add some mana, add to your devotion count, then untap, and add even again. more mana. So there's a lot of permutations for how much mana you can end up with. Yeah, the difference these. is that you have to still keep two mana floating to keep the chain going. And exactly. that's where it gets hard. Yeah, it's, it's complicated. So you see here, four, then taps and goes to six. So he's going to play Whisperwood Elemental with one mana floating. And that's just enough to keep this going. So he has six. Now he's down to one. He can untap, pay a second one. And this time he can get it. He can tap through for six. So he does have six more green available. And Robert's hand includes Ugin. I mean, he's got a lot of big stuff to work with here. Absolutely, yeah. I believe he just has six, so it's not Ugin this turn. But it could be Genesis Hydra on four, and that's what's going to be. Yeah, there's not a big rush for Robert to get to Ugin because he's ahead on the board right now, and Ugin clears everything if uh, Robert decides he wants to get the Stormbreath Dragon off the table. He can just win straight up like this. Yeah. And he, then if things get bad, he can play Ugin and hopefully have some Manifest Tokens. And I guess what he needs is, I mean, he, he has to race. He needs power here. Stormbreath? He doesn't have an answer ready, ready for Storm Breath. Well, you know, he always has the option of pulling the trigger on Ugin. I think he would just prefer to wait because it also clears up his board. Yeah. 
I mean, certainly that turn he made 10 power worth of creatures. Whisperwood Elemental, Genesis Hydra on four. I guess 11, he got a free Elvish Mystic. Elvish Mystic and then a Manifest Token. The last card in his hand is Critter Claws, so he just might kill with Critter's Claws next turn. Yeah, he does have red mana from yeah, the carry added. Yeah, that I, think, is... I think he's just going to kill him. Okay, well, he has two, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. So let's walk through this then. Okay, so at, at seven, that's two, you know, at seven mana, you can assume that the Nykthos, Nykthos is tapping for four. So four, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, seven, yeah, okay, that's 16. Plus, plus Robert has attackers. Yeah, he has they, attackers. So it's so, 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 so the X is X, you get 17 damage off the Crater's Claws. It's right. not 19, but I mean, he's got three geez. attackers against two blockers. He's got a four, 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 two, four, and a manifest token. If it's 17, then the attack pushes through lethal. Yeah, I believe it is. And that's assuming he doesn't just play more green mana symbols ahead of time. Or have a land. Oh wait, no, those two voyaging sailors are hiding out with the with the lands. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's, that's that's more mana. I was only, I wasn't counting them. That that's just a lethal crater's class yeah. with nothing else. So his first tap that is so right now he has nine devotion to green, not seven. So yeah, he can tap two mana. That's this is it's I think for this nine. Is one of those, this is lethal. This is gonna be one of those things where Robert does the math a couple of times and then it turns out that it wasn't even close. He has him dead yeah. by a bunch of points. So he has nine, so you think that the you can say that the Nykthos taps for six. So yeah, nine, he goes ahead and untaps Nykthos, then he goes down to seven, adds nine more, he's up to sixteen. Yeah, this is untaps, yeah, this is more than enough. I'm just gonna Yep, down to 16, down to 14, up to 23. And and an Ugin to boot. So Ugin with 8, he should have 15 green floating. Yeah, you can also just Ugin for 1, and then clear 16. out both the blockers right, and claws, claws for a bunch. And... for 14. For Claire's claws, I believe, for 16. And he's got the four fours left over. To, I mean, whatever. He's got it a bunch and of And there you have it in the swing <laughs> through. So... Ramp doing its thing, and Robert Bernie two zero moves to six and one. Mulligan misses second land drop, and by the time turn four or five rolls around, he's got a lethal. I mean, claw. you yeah. know it's scary when after that deck carry added, his next turn was Nykthos, Voyaging Seder, Voyaging Seder, and you said, "Oh boy, 